I want to prove that I can come out here and exist in the wilderness as long as I want to. This is going to be a bitch. Nobody knows what it's like here, except for the 10 guys out here doing it. Well, there they go. It just got real. So this is going to be home. We have to film it, and we're totally alone. Time to get shelter. There's nobody here but me. I think I'm too far gone. And I'm losing it. Yeah, I'm scared to death right now. I feel like I'm starving. I'm pretty sure I just saw a cougar. Oh, The last man standing wins $500,000. I don't want to go home. I want to win. This is a chance in a lifetime, but it's not worth dying over. The goal is to outlast and to stay out on the land as long as possible. We're driving in the opposite direction of what you normally do in a survival situation. We're elongating the process instead of trying to get out of it. See it. Good luck. And I don't know how long we might go. So this is home. We are here. This is crazy. I'm a complete lunatic. You know the type of area we're going to, but we don't know the exact location of where we're going. There goes civilization paddling out in a little dinghy. We are allowed a kit of 10 items, excluding our clothing. So you have 10 tools, for lack of a better word to try to survive. Just got real. I'm not very scared. I've been preparing myself mentally for this since I was like 14 years old. Yeah! I feel like a mosquito in a nudist colony. So much work to do. The toll that the isolation is going to play on all of us is not just being away from family, not having a single human soul that you can lean on, that you can rely on. We're all social creatures. It's really going to hurt people. It's going to, you know, there's going to be a lot of crying nights. Well, this is a really good idea. The only two things that I'm worried about at all will be being able to find enough food and uh, predators, cougar, wolves, and black bear, basically. Sometimes the land just rejects you. But sometimes, um, almost no matter what the land throws at you, the present prevails anyways. I don't want to be the first guy to tap. I don't want to go home. I want to do it. I want to win. Last man standing wins. Um, it's the bottom line. Day one, drop off, seeing my boat leave. I don't even know how to describe it. It is, uh, there's a sick feeling to my stomach right now. This is a whole new level of survival. And we're trying to film it. It's the type of thing that you see on the news where a guy gets lost in the woods, and we're purposely doing it. I think it's going to be nearly impossible to keep everything dry. 
there's 100% humidity here on top of the rain. My strategy on day one is uh, don't go into shock. My overall strategy, though, is uh, first things first, get my shelter going, find water. Food can wait two or three days if it needs to. Definitely the shelter's going to be one of the biggest things. As far as the competition goes, I honestly think I have a shot at winning. I'm in my zone. Yeah. Let's give you an idea of what's going on with me right now. I've built a little temporary shelter. That thing will last two or three days. Uh, it's just protecting me from the, from the rain. But what I have here is a nice piece of fat wood. This whole thing is just drenched with like pine turpin. You see all these little crystalline? It's like all pine sap. It goes, runs down through that. There's been damage to this, and to be honest with you, it looked like it was scraped by a bear at one point. But uh, I'm gonna take it and try to process this thing down and see if I can get some fire roaring. Come on, get in there. Here we go. Come on. Catch. I can't even get this freaking thing to light. The solitude, you know, it's just going to be completely overwhelming. I have an area of focus right now, but uh, already I'm not thinking straight. The only thing I'm thinking about is my kids and my wife. My daughter, my two-year-old boy. He wakes up every morning, first thing he does is come in, he's like, Dad, you know, puts his arms around me, let's hop in bed and watch Scooby-Doo. That's our morning. And my wife is pregnant. She's four months, so I'm leaving a lot behind. It's really tore me up. You tell Daddy, say, kick butt. Kick butt, Daddy. Do you think I'm going to get a big deer? Do you think Daddy will see anything else out there in the woods? Mm -hmm. What? An elephant. An elephant? Pretty awesome. One of the initial reasons I even wanted to come is to show my son someday that if he wants something, he needs to try for it. I just don't want to be here and give up. For God's sakes. <sighs> the type of stress we're going to be under it. The exhaustion is, is going to play a key factor, especially with the rain and the cold. I excel at just getting my basic needs. Make a shelter, make your fire, find your water, get your food. I'm worried about fire more than anything. I don't know if you can tell how wet it is. But it is horrible. And of course, I'm paranoid. So I keep thinking I hear big animals. But scary stuff around here. They're predators out here. I, I, have, no, I don't have big predators. Where I come from, it's coyotes. So uh, the bears, the wolves, and the, especially the cougars are my biggest fear here. But um, I do believe that my job does prepare me for this type of scenario. I'm law enforcement officer. It's tough going out there to deal with people that act like wild animals. But as far as instincts, I'm a fight type person. See, this is what scares me. Probably about 30 yards away from my camp here. I just stepped in fresh bear crap. There's fish everywhere. found a bear den. It's full of fish heads and everything else. Bears are feasting.
Well, no question about it, I am definitely crazy. So here we are. Wow. I did not expect this place to be so thick. You can't see three feet into the bush here and it's all wet. It's all wet. So my first order of business is to kind of halfway scout this place out and see where it might be a suitable shelter location. And fire, if, if we can get a fire going in this on the first night, that would be nice. Smells like dead stuff around here. Oh, man. The biggest challenge in this environment is rain. You gotta stay dry. I have to make a shelter. I have to get out of the elements because I don't wanna be soaking wet on the first day, get my sleeping bag wet, stuff like that. Uh, I gotta go for water, food. This is a hypothermic situation ready to happen. Well, <sighs> kept my feet dry, but my shirt's soaked. I'm just wearing this light Primloft jacket and it's soaking wet and it'll rip real easy and I gotta go through an impenetrable jungle it seems. Oh, this backpack weighs me down. I think the most important part of survival is just keeping a cool head, acting slow and methodical. <sighs> The way I can clear my mind is just by thinking of my daughter. I'm leaving behind a wife and a kid. It's gonna be hard, but thinking of my daughter is gonna make me push hard and be strong. When I come back, she might be a year older, but this is gonna make me appreciate everything more, and that's a good thing. I'm literally crawling. <sighs> I gotta make it somewhere where it's not so thick. This is crazy. Overall, how do I feel about my situation? I feel pretty good about my situation. Um, the woods are thick. The night's closing in real fast, but overall, I feel really good. It's gnarly in here. But beautiful, super beautiful. If this is a spring, I'm gonna flip. What? I got a waterfall in my backyard and a beach. Look at this. I'm over the moon. Water right there. So I got a checklist, right? Four basic things that I'm trying to acquire or maintain here in the wilderness. First is shelter. Second is warmth, that could be clothing or fire. Third is water, which, check that one off the list. And the last one is food. It's nice to stop every now and then and take a look and see what other things might be moving. It's starting to get dark. And this is the time that cougars are out. And they're definitely an issue on this island. Big safety concern.
so far day one, bull crap. I can't even eat. Or boil any water. To be honest with you, I haven't went out and scouted anything yet. I'm, I'm afraid to, just simply because of the animals. I, I am so afraid of bears and cougars that I don't even know what to think. So tonight's going to be absolutely terrifying for me. Day one's coming to an end. I will have no idea where else to make a camp. I didn't come here to compete with bears and, and cougars over territory. <coughs> hey, bear. Hey, bear. Okay, I'm here, and uh, how do I feel right now? It's jumbled up, it really is. The bears and stuff like that there, uh, you know, they're concerned, they really are. But this is a gorgeous place. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, after an hour of scrambling through stuff like that, I have come upon a game trail and flat ground. Thank Jesus, because that was getting a little bit much. Okay, so I definitely don't want to camp on a game trail, but this little bit of opening is way, way better than what I had. This is nuts. We have 10 items we got to choose from, not much, and uh, we got to improvise with what we have around. We got a 10 by 10 nylon tarp and a tank of paracord. So that's gonna be my shelter for tonight. My plan is to tie my paracord to this tree and a tree about 13 feet away and string my tarp up and uh, just get it going from there. Man, I'm so, I, this is hard. This is hard. This is harder than I thought it was going to be. After being out here and seeing the kind of rain they get out here, my plan for a shelter has definitely changed. I'm no longer going with the, just an angled roof. It's going to be a peak. There's no way that any kind of tarp or fir twigs or cedar boughs are going to keep out rain. Uh, it has to be a steep angle, so I'm going two tarps overlapped and uh, I'm going to build up the walls and then build up almost like a log cabin over top of it to try and get even more protection from the rain. It's going to be a big chore, staying dry, staying warm. Not bad, Not bad at all. Yeah, it should be all right for tonight. I hope so, anyway. Hello, Mr. Game Camera. How are you doing today? Look at this. It looks so funny when I do this. Whoa, 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 wow. Hello, Mr. Game Camera. You doing okay? Oh, yes. 
I'll back away from you now. Back away. <sighs> this was quite possibly the shoddiest shelter I've ever put up. Um, got put out right before dark, uh, probably two hours before dark, hour and a half. And I scrambled to find a place that was high and dry enough that I could uh, that I could spread out in and uh, spread this tarp up to keep the rain off of me in case it rains tonight. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna be a long night. I mean, uh, this here is not the ideal spot, that's for sure. I'm not sure if I'm beside a game trail or not, but there's trails everywhere, so how would you know? You just gotta hope that uh, a bear does not wander through here. I'll keep you posted. Well, today's been a real eye-opener. I didn't get much done. I'm hungry and I'm thirsty. And I'm wet and I'm cold. Any other time I can get a fire going. I'm telling you, like, I can make a fire. Hey, bear. Okay, here's the deal. I woke up 45 minutes ago. I heard something behind us, my little shelter here. And it was something pretty big. So I kind of made some noise. And then I kind of heard it pad off. To be honest with you, I'm scared to death right now. I knew there were going to be animals here, but I didn't think I was going to be stalked. I hear it actually breathing at the back side of this freaking shelter. Hey, bear. Hey, bear. Okay, here's the deal. I knew there were going to be animals here, but I didn't think I was going to be stalked. I'm not going to stick out here and do this. This is something that I was doing just for fun, and now that I'm prey, I'm not, I'm not doing it. It's not worth it. I don't care what anybody says. I'd rather be at home with my family anyway, and then this crap's happening. It's 
is not worth it to me. This is not worth it to me. I'm not. I'm not going to be stalked. I just, I can't take a chance. I feel like last night was a warning, and I'm heeding that warning, so that's why I'm choosing to tap out. So are you disappointed? Oh, yeah, very. I, that's what I said. I, I, I don't know what else to do. You know, I'm. Don't know. I definitely did not believe that I was going to be the first guy gone. But, I mean, last night was the scariest night I've ever had in my entire life. I mean, I'm a police officer. I've done a lot of stuff, but there's nothing, nothing at all to describe what I felt last night. morning. It's a little chilly out. Sleeping was a little interesting. I, off and on, you know. Stay dry and I'm, my sleeping bag is incredibly comfortable, so that wasn't a problem. Today's number one priority. Getting some proper firewood, heat some water, have a drink because this is the second day, and I really haven't had anything to drink yet. So dehydration is becoming a serious concern at this point. If you can achieve fire and maintain it, you can definitely live here. There's a lot of resources. That's going to be the difference between making it and not making it here. Ah. Yeah, that hurt. 90 days is my personal goal. If I can make 90 days, I may just say I'm done and come out because I don't have anything left to prove to anybody. Because if you can make it 90 days in this situation here, then you can make it 180 days. Finally. And I may stay longer. Hell, if I'm warm and dry and fat and happy, fatter and happy, I'm going to stay. I found. A nice piece of driftwood down here that's dry. I'm gonna cut it up for firewood because there ain't nothing dry back there. I'm from the swamps of Florida, so this might as well be the dark side of the moon to me. Weirdo. Everybody's behind me. My family's behind me. Um, and everybody just says, do your best, and you're not gonna let us down. Come on, hammerhead. Of actual fears, my biggest fears are the, the big predators, uh, you know because I'm pretty much defenseless. He's good. <laughs> he looked it. In my house, I'm never more than an arm's reach from a firearm, ever. If I go outside, depending on where I'm going, it dictates what I carry, and I always carry a weapon. Yeah. Are you ready for your birthday? Yeah. What do you want? What? Birthday money. You want birthday money? <laughs> birthday money. <laughs> birthday money. <laughs> Don't you want a, a gun? Yeah. <laughs> When it comes to wildlife, if confrontation can't be avoided, everything at my disposal is a weapon. Rocks, sticks, knives, bows, arrows, guns. I'm going to use it. Oh, you want both? OK. You want both? More, huh? 
This is the longest I've ever had to go being unarmed. When I was a kid, I was attacked by a German Shepherd. So that's put an uncomfortableness between me and dogs um, for most of my life. And then knowing that there's dogs here that'll not just kill you, but they'll eat you. And that's, that's pretty damn scary. And they might get me, but big boy's not going down easy. I didn't know it wasn't running, wasn't running. I hope it was running. Man, you cannot get a fire here to save your ass. Amazing. I actually had it. I mean, there's, there's heat there and everything, but it will not burn. Fire just may be one of those things you don't get here. I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. fire I just can't get it to to go I had fire a couple times I just had one a minute ago I tried throwing some of the trash from my band-aid on it just to help it keep going and uh, not even that would help so I don't I don't know all the stuff I have broke down feels dry touching on my face it just won't light So I got this uh, bundle of tinder, old man's beard, and what I'm gonna try to do is, uh, I'm gonna try to get some um, sap, some pine pitch from one of these fir trees and see if it'll uh, help it ignite. Because thus far, I, I mean, everything in this, in this forest is soaking wet. There's no getting uh, dry wood here. So if I don't get something small started and dry out some of these small twigs, I'm not having a fire tonight, which means I'm not having water tonight, which means I'm not eating tonight. So uh, let's hope this works. Failure, failure, failure. It will not ignite. The sun's gonna go down soon. I did a little exploring. And I found some mussels while I was walking by. There's a ton over there. A lot of them are already broken open. Oh, that one is. I also found, I believe these are periwinkles. Not from this area, so. I don't know the names of everything. But at least I'll have something to eat tonight.
the hell was that? <laughs> oh, man. So I hear wolves howling. It's dark, it's starting to fall. It's not dark yet, it's sunset right now. And I'm on an island during low tide as high tide is coming back, collecting firewood. I don't even have a weapon on me except for my knife. <laughs> I don't have an ax, I don't have my bow, nothing. That was a beautiful crane right there. Wow, oh, it was huge. He's already gone. I just hope the wolves don't head this way before I get back to my camp and get my fire going. All right, trying to get a fire going, night two, and it just started raining. Just making some quick feather sticks. This stuff doesn't feather very well, but it's so wet. And by the stuff, I mean everything. <laughs> Everywhere else I've ever lit fire before. Normally I do one, maybe two strikes per fire. It's like six strikes per fire. It's crazy. I commend anyone who can survive in this area. The northeast where I live, it's a lot easier than here. Dad? What? Are you going to make a fire? Yep, that's the plan. That's my idea. Dad, can I put the fire on too? You want to help? Go ahead. Sure. It's going to be very hard for me to be away from my family. Ooh, well, this one. That's a big one. It's my whole life, my whole world, revolves around waking up and spending a day with them. All right. Marshmallow time. But I know why I'm going. I know how they feel about it. I know the opportunity presented to me. I'm excited. Look it. Wow. I think that nature taught us everything that we know, in a way. So I find it incredibly engaging to imagine that I could be connecting with that. Made a fire on the rain coast. It's a good feeling. This was very important to get done today. Okay, so I roasted those periwinkles and mussels. Here's the show. It's not bad. I like periwinkles. Usually, I eat them back home too. I heard a wolf howl. Sound like it was kind of
Kind of cool, it's kind of cool. Two wolves going. Three wolves going. This is home. There goes civilization. This is nuts. No, no, no. Definitely did not believe that I was going to be the first guy gone. I was basically surrounded by bears. What the hell was that? Where the hell are they? I can't see them. It's so loud up there. Right up there. I'm gonna go hide in a tent. This is gonna be a bitch. We have to film it and we're totally alone. Nobody knows what it's like here except for the 10 guys out here doing it. Time to get shelter. There's nobody here but me. So hard doing this alone. I'm scared to death right now. I feel like I'm starving. Pretty sure I just saw a cougar. Oh. Last man standing wins $500,000. I don't wanna go home, I wanna win. This is a chance in a lifetime, but it's not worth dying over. There's three wolves on the ridge behind the camp. Right behind my camp is a tall ridge, 20, 30 feet tall. And there were three wolves up there a little while ago. Um, that's that's terrifying. That's, I have no way to defend, I have some pepper spray, but I have no way to defend myself against wolves. Um, it sounded like they may have moved out a little bit. I'm really hoping they have, because I'm scared of them, to be perfectly honest with you. I don't have a firearm, I don't have anything. And the thought of getting attacked by some wolves is the scariest thing I can think of at the moment. When I was a kid, I was attacked by a German Shepherd. So that's put an uncomfortableness between me and dogs. And then knowing that there's dogs here that'll not just kill you, but it'll eat you. And that's, that's pretty damn scary. Going to do something where you know you're returning is different than when you get there and changes, and maybe you might not come. And I told everybody I'd do this as long as it was safe. But the predators were my biggest concern. I hate they showed up so soon and they have nothing. I'm not one used to being defenseless. I usually have the answer to most of those kind of problems. That's just not a chance I'm willing to take. So I've called to be extracted. I'm not gonna be sleeping here under a piece of canvas with a bunch of wolves behind me. He's alive. That's good. How you doing? I'm scared. <laughs> you know where that 
Yep. That ridge is. Yeah. My campus had just below that ridge, and they're right on that ridge last night. Just terrifying. <laughs> that was scary. Because okay. it's not like they were just howling or nothing. They were like either fighting amongst themselves or fighting something, and it was uh, pretty intense. Because you got nothing, you know. I mean. I'm not used to being defenseless, and that was that was pretty pretty scary. Yeah, I mean this is. I mean, you know, you feel like a complete failure, but um, it's not worth the risk to me to to get hurt. I got too many people to count on me. I hate that it was so fast, two days, but. There's nothing I can do about that. It is what it is at this point. But I'm I'm big enough to admit that I was scared shitless, and that's why I'm gonna leave. Interesting encounter last night. There was an animal about 30 feet from my tent. I believe it was a wolf. It wasn't a big deal. I just slept with my knife in my hand unsheathed, slept on my back, had my headlamp on, and uh, rested gently. And if something decided to come into my tent, I would have no issue turning this on, blinding them instantaneously, and striking <laughs> numerous times in the face, eyes, neck. No issues. I'm still in this dense forest, still at my first camp. All my clothes are still totally soaked. I was wringing some out last night. I haven't found fresh water yet. That's a big deal. Once I find fresh water, I will set up a proper camp. I'm so glad that I captured the water that I did. That one pot has carried me, but there's only a little left. I can't rely on just rain to survive for water. Pretty soon, I'm going to be in dire straits. Yep. Fresh water. It's the name of the game. Got to find it. So I'm on a really, really steep incline, and I'm fighting through this stuff, weaving and crawling and whatever I can do. Hope there's something good at the top. Well, no water. So I was hoping. It might have been a ridge or something like that. So I've climbed up to the peak. I can see salt water on both sides. So now I'm gonna start working. I'm gonna try to stay on the spine if I can. I'm gonna start working towards the other end of the island. Maybe there's water somewhere over there. If not, I'm gonna have to do some drastic changes. I'll have to pick up all my camp and find a new location that has water. Sometimes I think of what would the situation be if I was out here with my family. If my daughter was walking around out here with me and she was hungry. I mean, I go without eating. But if I had to provide for my family right now, I wouldn't be getting it done. It's important when you're looking for water to not get too animated, to not raise your blood pressure up, get your heart beating fast break into a sweat. All these things, rushing around, hiking really hard, will hinder your body's ability to maintain what it has for water currently. And the only water I have is back at camp. And it's not a lot. It's only a couple sips. Today, I know what I need to do is find firewood, and if I can't find firewood around here, then I have to move because I can't keep going without drinking water. It's just not possible. I wish I had a beach. There's no beach. I can't go out to a beach to try and get food or try and even set up near it. It's thick marsh, the thickest in the world, 
and it's peak rainy season in a rainforest. It's it's just ridiculous. I don't uh, I don't know why I'm here. This is a bad sight. I'm hoping the other guys actually got a better sight than I did because if everybody got a sight like this, this isn't lasting long. Today needs to be a productive day. Oh, it's nice to be out in the open here. I felt so dense in the, in the forest there. It's so much darker in here. <sighs> oh, there's a bear. There's a bear right across. Let's see if I can zoom in on him. There he is. He's actually coming my way. Hello, bear. Hello, bear. Hello. Go on, bear. I'm bigger than you. I'm bigger than I really am. He does not mind me at all. You stay on your side. This is my side. Go on. Uh-oh. Oh, it's nice to be out in the open here. I felt so dense in the, in the forest there. It's so much darker in here. <sighs> oh, there's a bear. There's a bear right across. Let's see if I can zoom in on him. There he is. He's actually coming my way. Hello, bear. Hello, bear. He's kind of intimidating me, to be honest with you. I've never had this, this much time uh, near a bear. Please turn around and go back. I don't want trouble. Good boy, go on. Ah, man. I need a fire. I need a fire tonight, man. Ah, this is real now, soaking wet, can't find firewood, and a bear who doesn't care what I tell him. Look at that, look at that. Oh my goodness. This is crazy. He's coming this way. He's got his nose up smelling me. I gotta go. I gotta get out of here, he's coming my way. I gotta go. I don't want none with, no problems with him. on some eyes onto my hat. I've heard it helps with cougars, and that cougars are a problem up here. Might be worth it, because oftentimes they attack from behind, and so during the day I'm wearing this behind me, so if I'm turning my head and moving like this, the cougar might think twice. Does it work? I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. There's just nothing that prepares you for this. It's like the first couple days in a new town. It's just, you know, you don't know your way around. You don't know 
traffic patterns. You don't know where, where your favorite grocery store is yet. I'm just learning the neighborhood now, trying to get comfortable. Geez, I think I see a ball in the water. Hmm. So let's see if I can scoop it up. Who knows what I can use that for? Sweet fine. Solid? That's a buoy. Very nice find. No holes in it, not waterlogged. It's perfectly good. Geez, maybe I'll uh, call him Wilbur. <laughs> Get off face on him. <laughs> Girlfriend actually told me, don't do that. <laughs> Start naming balls and stuff if you find them. <laughs> I'm getting pretty dried out to the point I stopped filming with the other camera and that's what's frustrating. These cameras, that's, that's a whole facet of this that I just I didn't realize how hard it would be to do all this and try to film it. It's really really a challenge. I'm not a tech kind of person. Sun's going down. It's gonna be dark soon. I kind of don't even care. <laughs> I'm not even gonna build a fire right now, so I'm not even interested. I just, I've been looking for water all day, probably for at least eight hours today. It's just the far side of my island. Now, I doubt that you guys can hear it, but all the way across, I can hear what sounds like water, like rapids, all the way over there. I think that'd be my, my last hurrah to look for water. I mean, I'm getting tired as it is. <sighs> I gotta find water. I mean, I'll have to cross all that. I'm not even sure how I'm gonna do that yet. I definitely don't wanna swim or anything like that. I might have to make a boat. But if I don't find water there, I'm in big trouble. Quest for water continues. <sighs> Stressful. It gives me a lot of anxiety. I start thinking of like, when I can have a drink of water next, constantly. It like, it can dominate your thoughts. It's hard to think of other things sometimes, you know? I have to cross right here at low tide, and then walk across. I believe that's mainland. Walk across right here. That's an island, I'll be on the other side. I have to walk all the way down over there into that corner. My only water source is a tarp that's gathering what little water I can. And my pot is basically empty right now. So I can take a gamble and use that tarp to make a boat so I don't waste the day. So if I have a problem and I fall in on this makeshift tarp boat, that's my only water collector. I'm in big trouble because then I'm gonna be totally soaked. I'm gonna be freezing cold. I mean, my hands are almost numb right now. But I mean, if all my clothes are that and that's me, I mean, we're talking serious hypothermic situation. And this place is so hard to make a fire, that's like a huge risk.
Survival psychology is interesting. I'm starting to see it more and more. Just little choices escalate to bigger choices. And you can be hard on yourself. I feel myself being a little hard on myself. I want to do what's right all the time. I strive for it. Probably too much, probably to a fault. I grew up a farm boy in the Midwest, so I was always outside working, using my hands. Moved away when I was 19, became an outdoor educator. The most aggressive time for bears is like, I grew up in a family of seven people. My mother and my father are still living. I have three sisters and a brother. I have intimate friends that I really appreciate. You know, I have a core group of people that are really excited about what I'm doing right here. You're only allowed one knife? We could take a smaller knife too, but that counts as two items. Okay. We're taking out 10 items out of a list of 40. And really it just comes down to making good decisions. It's gonna be the difference between life and death. I wouldn't want to be a bear if I was walking up on that. <laughs> Ultimately, it's it's gonna be a crapshoot. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, man. Get there and think, damn, I wish I'd have brought that. Totally right. <laughs> don't need this. <laughs> Any sort of metal That's edge. Yeah, totally. So night's starting to set in, and I'm hustling to get a bed done. I'm uh, cutting off all these branches. I believe this is a fir tree. I'm sorry, a yew tree. Um, before the night sets, so I have a, a cozy place to sleep instead of sleeping right on the ground. I've been sleeping on my tarp, and it's fine. It insulates me, but I'd rather have something with some cushion. So I don't got much time to talk before it gets dark. I need to get moving. It's too wet here. This is a friggin' bog. I can't, I can't stay here. There's no surviving here. There's no thriving here. It's gonna, I can't stay here. This is all low-lying marshy. But there's no wood to use. I try to chop down trees. They break in half. They're just sponge. So while low tide is at the river, I'm going to pack up all my crap, camera gear, backpacks, just tons of stuff, and haul it across the river. And I've only got about an hour, an hour and a half of light left, so I got to get going. <laughs> Feet are soaked. My legs are soaked. And now I'm on the same side of the river as the bear. I got dropped off, and the tide was high, and it wasn't even a possibility to cross that. And now it's nighttime. That's when the tide's down low. And now I'm wet with no fire and wet gear. Looks like a game trail in there. Oh. Looks like a clearing right there. That'd be fantastic. Just gotta get up this nonsense. This could work. This could work. Still searching. I really need to find water. Well, here it is. Is it a boat or is it a tarp filled with leaves? Okay, I have a dry bag. Um, I have my clothes in there, everything but my underwear and my boots. I have my ferro rod and knife on me. I also have the glass uh, bottle I found in there as well. So. We'll see what happens. If I end up going over, it would be absolutely tragic. Today's journey for water continues. Have to find fresh water. 
before I'm done. All the way across, I can hear what sounds like water rapids. So, built a boat out of a tarp and sticks and leaves. If I have a problem and I fall in on this makeshift tarp boat, I mean, we're talking serious hypothermic situation. But if I don't find water there, I'm in big trouble. I'm in the current. It's just pulling me along. I hear some water running over here. I'm gonna go check that out. Made it. Only about an hour of sunlight left. And I hear water running over here. And I think I see water running over here. And that would be a huge blessing that I finally found fresh water. After three days of looking. That's what I heard. That is a beautiful sound of a freshwater mountain stream. Oh, yes. It's all good in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, go over and check the water in that tarp. Oh, yeah. Water there, water there, a little bit there. Sweet. stuff. Kind of wonder how the other boys are doing. I'm sure there's probably been some frustrated boys out there. I haven't had water in a little while. There's this big old rotten log right by my camp and I decided to make it into a water catch. So we're gonna hollow out a big old hole in the middle here. Then we'll put up my plastic sheet over it and we'll arrange it so the water just runs down into the water catch. And that's probably big enough to hold five or six gallons. So that's good stuff, good stuff. I've sweated so much running around trying to get the lay of the land here. It's starting to feel kind of dry. My stomach's gnawing, you know, and it's not from hunger. So I'm gonna find a place where the water runs in. Try to fill my water bottle up and then maybe, just maybe I can get a fire going to sterilize the water. And if I can just get that one drink and a decent night's sleep, I'll be okay for today. Stuff looks like iced tea. That'll be a start. And this thing's showing half low battery, and I'm not even sure how to charge this. Not tech savvy. With no other human interaction, no other human being talking, nobody talking to you, nobody breathing next to you, it just really, uh, it really messes with your head. Part of that could be dehydration or the beginning stages of dehydration. So what I'm gonna do is go down here and grab some water and I think I found a way to filtrate it without fire. So it looks like the water looks decent, it's clean. It's just, uh, it's a little tinge from the tannins from all the trees in it, but it's fresh. What I'm going to attempt to do is run this water through this moss to filtrate it and catch it in this cap. It definitely filtrates the filters of color out. I mean, it's, the tannins are all filtered out as far as uh, killing all the bugs that make you sick.
It tastes kind of nutty. Mm. After so much hiking, I ended up going up a hill and down a hill with all my gear and set up here. But the plus side it is, and it's a huge one, uh, this is what I found. <laughs> now this is exactly what I had hoped for, exactly what I had planned for, actual beach, not swampy, marshy crap. There's a ton of trees, not in the cedar swamp forest, that I can actually use for fire. The tide comes in and actually leaves me some bulk kelp and other kinds of seaweed. There's actual resources here. There might even be some clams and crabs here, which would make all the difference. Awesome. I found a limpet. I have to get my knife to get it out, I think. There we go. So it's small, and there's only a little bit of meat in it, but I've already found two. So I can gather a couple of these and cook them up. I feel a lot more better today. I feel re rejuvenated. Uh, crossing that river was the best thing I could have possibly done. And there's a looks to be a little river running. It's more of a stream, I guess. It should be fresh water, though. It is fresh water. Oh, thank God. This is ideal. Super happy. It's a total different feeling than yesterday. Crossing that river was the best thing I could have possibly done. I'm going to make a fire on the beach. Come on, boil some water before I start construction because I'm dying here. Man, it's so hard getting a fire going here. And then go build my shelter and whatnot. It's 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 a total different feeling than yesterday. I'm, I'm actually happy. Everything's looking up. Might take a few tries, but best place right now I've found to make a uh, fire is the beach. I've often wondered since a child if I could actually go out and survive with the skills I have. It's basically a personal challenge to me. I'm representing my family, my country. I have to do my best. Come on. I have tapped into all aspects of survival. I can make fire. I can make shelter primitively. I've made primitive knives and cut down trees with hatchets just out of stone. I've taken on the primitive ways. OK, this is my man cave here. I keep it locked, of course. Girlfriends, she don't like guns and knives and such. These here, stone hatchets. That one's made out of slate. That's made out of flint. All kinds of primitive knives and such that I've made. I've actually cut up meat and so on with these here. This one is made out of dacite. I've got it a trout with this. This is a sweet little knife. It's one of my favorite. Here's a uh, ash bow that I made a few years ago. Here's another knife here. This is obsidian, and that, that thing is gorgeous. You can see it's, you know, it's see-through. OK, I've got it. And we just got to keep it going. Well, here's my water source. OK, let's do this. Out of the other nine, I have no clue. But I know myself. I'm a problem solver. I could stay out there a long time. Here we go. We got a rolling boil. That water is good now. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. You know, pretty well anything that I can think of, I have it covered. 
besides a cougar jump on my back. <laughs> I just moved my camp. It's cold. It's raining. I just crossed that maybe six or eight times, trying to move all the stuff with my boat. I'm actually wet, like, to my waist. Everything I have is wet, pretty much. I'm totally soaked. Took my boots off so they wouldn't be wet. My toes are completely numb right now. I'm getting hypothermic. I don't have a camp yet. I don't have a fire yet. I don't know where I'm going to set up. It's not good. So I got to get moving. I want to set up my tarp into a shelter. As long as I have a place to sleep that's dry and safe, and I have a fire so I can start drying myself out, not worry about hypothermia and things like that, that's all I really want. Got my tripod structure set up, and the lashing was the perfect tension. So I'm going to throw my tarp on here and see how it fits, and do some tweaking. and get my shelter up. When you get the folding just right, it's almost like origami. You gotta just work with the material and figure out the shape that it wants to be in. I have canvas all around me, everywhere, and a door. This is far superior to a lean-to, because now air can only come in from the front. This is gonna trap any heat that I generate when I close it all up. Not a moment too soon. We're getting smashed by a storm right now. The wind's picked up. It's been building all day. It's raining hard right now. I need to set up a tarp over my shelter because it's just raining constantly here. I need some living space that's dry so I can set up a fire, make myself warm, and kind of make this camp a little more permanent. When I first got out here, I was feeling pretty good. I was really feeling good. I was really thinking long term, but now I've kind of come to the terms of, you know, this is a pretty cold, unwelcome place to live. I mean, I kind of have like a clock over my head right now. It all depends on getting set up, being able to get stabilized. Right now, I'm not as stable as I want it to be. Well, it's not perfect, but at least it's up. It's something anyways. Well, here it is. Fresh boiled water. wrenched beyond belief. Downpouring. If it doesn't get better, then I might go home and continue on with my life. I don't like being in these situations at all. There's definitely things to eat here. You can forage. But if you know what's around, that's a sure bet. I found a slug. It's a pretty good size there. I normally wouldn't prepare food at camp, but I figure it's not going to put off a whole lot of scent. I'm going to boil him first to get all the slime out. And then I'll probably chop him up and uh, Sizzle him on there for a minute. I don't know how it'll taste, but we'll find out. So what I'm going to do now, just if I can, take him out of there, move him over to my improvised cutting board, de-slime the little fella. Ooh, he's hot. Oh, wow. 
That's kind of gross. First we saute the slug in a brown gravery and all manner of excrement and foul whatevers will come emanating from, from the snail. Yeah. Don't let this bother you, because we would simply add more wine. Yeah, a good rolling ball kill any of the little strange happenings in there. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. No doubt about it. It's exactly as you would expect. Kind of taste a little bit shrimp. And something else. It has the texture of uh, calamari. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna um, gonna start grabbing those when I see them. They're good. good at all. If that's the case, I I have to keep this fire going indefinitely. I think I sat it here on top of my coat, and it was the same color as my coat, so when I picked it up, it might have flown off. And as you can see, the tide's coming right into that log. When there's a big wave, it, it rolls right up to the log. See what I mean? It's coming right up to it. If that happened, and my fire still went into the water, I'm screwed. Oh man, I really hope this doesn't happen. Oh man, what a dumb, dumb mistake. Ugh. Damn it. I really didn't need this today. that I'm screwed. I can't get I can't get water to drink. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Wow, this sucks. This sucks. I can't believe it. I'm not sleeping here under a piece of canvas with a bunch of wolves behind me. That was scary. That was enough for me. I gotta find water. So, built a boat out of a tarp and sticks. I hear some water running over a freshwater mountain stream. Oh, yes. Hello, bear. You stay on your side. So I got a big problem. I lost my ferro rod. If that's the case, I have to keep this fire going indefinitely. I'm screwed. I don't know what to do. This is gonna be a bitch. We have to film it, and we're totally alone. Nobody knows what it's like here, except for the 10 guys out here doing it. Time to get shelter. There's nobody here but me. So hard doing this alone. I'm scared to death right now. I feel like I'm starving. Pretty sure I just saw a cougar. Oh, The last man standing wins $500,000. I don't want to go home. I want to win. This is a chance in a lifetime, but it's not worth dying over. It's funny how time works here. I don't think about clocks or the hour of day, but I look out at the ocean and 
the tide now has become my clock. So I'm starting to starting to get into a rhythm. First couple days has been challenging trying to find my groove out here and get in it and just fit into the flow of nature. So we'll make the rounds here at the supermarket. See, we have seaweed. The upper portion is the most palatable. In my area where I live geographically, a lot of people come to me to learn about plants and things like that. Satisfying. During my time here, being in an area that I'm totally unfamiliar with, I don't know a thing about the plants, and I'm going to have to rely heavily on my instincts about things and just observe and study and make decisions on what's going on in that world. Bull kelp. Tastes slimy, yet substantial. Lucky for me, I'll eat about anything until you just get tired of it and say, I want to go home. Would you like green tea tropical or organic African nectar? I'm going to go with the green. Like I said, it's not a competition against people. It's a competition against myself. I think that's something that's common among everybody that goes to the woods. That's why you go there. It's our church. That's our temple. That's where we get in touch with creation, creator, self. And when you strip everything away, it gets pretty real. This stuff is good, but it don't have anything on Nana's cooking. Mm. So I need to get some firewood, and I also want to build a cabin. So I think it's time we do some serious work. So let's drop a big tree. Now, why am I building a cabin? I really want four walls around me that I can feel secure in. If big bad bear is gonna come knocking on my door, I'm gonna have a few moments to be able to grab my ax, my spear, or whatever. So close. I found clay. I scored, it goes right here. Is a deposit of clay. There's so much I can do with clay. I can make vessels, I can make um, I can chink in between a fireplace if I want to have an indoor fireplace, if I get that far. So I would be able to have a fire indoors with some stone and clay mixed. I'd be able to eat food in there and feel safe. Plus, I'd just be able to dry out. I think the real challenge is the psychology of being here alone. And if I can get four walls around me and a little fireplace, I know I can last longer. Perfect. Oh my God, that was a lot of work. The first time I hauled logs out of the wood was with my pop. We'd get firewood on weekends. I was like eight years old and all I wanted to be doing was like watching Ninja Turtles. I despised it. Now I really like it. But he did teach me how to move logs on my shoulder. A couple times, a couple first times I did it, it was the most painful experience. And then, um, then after a while, he's like, you know, there's a muscle on your back that you can kind of balance stuff on. And it isn't so bad as long as you have good footing. And one day I found it and something clicked. I was like, oh, yeah. <sighs> OK. So, no, I just need to adjust it. Oh, yeah. OK. 
Okay. Let's try it. I had a plan. I got fire going. I got water boiled up, and that was great. And I got some food in me. And then after that, my plan was to start building my shelter. And I turned around, and my, where I had set my fire steel on top of my jacket, I must have grabbed my jacket without noticing my fire steel was there. And it went into the sand or into the water. And the, the tide came up. And it, by the time I noticed, it was completely gone. I searched for two hours for that fire steel, and it's just not here. It's just super wet, and without a fire steel, what am I going to do? I just can't believe I lost it. Ugh. I'm so frustrated with myself right now. That it's, it's, it's just such a stupid thing to happen. There's a friction fire here is not even in the question. It, it, it won't work. The, the wood is so all the wood is so. So my options are stay here and drink water from the river without purifying or boiling it and risk getting giardia or whatever else, or go home. Um, that said, I'm not going to have any fire to cook my food either. I don't know what to do. <laughs> this is the worst. I'd rather go home because I was missing my family or anything else other than this. This is just stupidity. I can't believe it. I don't know what to do. I don't want to go home, that's for sure. It was a rough start for me. Losing that fire still really, really got to me. I just, I don't know, I, maybe I'm just exhausted, but I just lost my will to be here. I think I'm done. I'm sorry to everybody I let down. Sorry to my wife and my daughter, all my friends and my mom. I didn't realize what it was gonna be like here. It sucks. I really didn't want to quit, but it's hard for me. I think I hear my ride coming. That's it, guys. Sorry I couldn't last longer. I've done such more than this. This is nothing. Three days is nothing. <laughs> Just, I guess I wasn't ready, you know? That's it. Obviously, if I can't even keep track of my what am I doing over here? Getting ready for this thing. I constantly said, I'll be fine as long as I'm not the first person to tap out. And I'll guarantee you I am.
None of those other guys have tapped out yet. Today's my first big shelter day, so I'm gonna really get going on that primary shelter, and I'm excited. It's gonna be a good day. Okay, buddy. Time to fall now, eh? If you talk Canadian to it, it goes faster. Hey, buddy. Time to fall now. This whole wilderness living skills, bushcraft thing. If this is one of my main hobbies and career paths. This is pretty awesome. But in the back of my head, there's always just missing my wife and soon to be child. You get this stick. Go get this stick. Man, no. Oh. My wife is pregnant. I made her pregnant. It's my fault. The hardest part is not going to be not being able to talk to you. No one's going to be laughing at you. Yeah, no there. one's going to be laughing at me. The bugs for... aren't going to Yeah, they're not going to. For you. It's a tough crowd, I think. <laughs> There's just a lot that I'm going to have to do by myself. But that's OK. That's the big mental struggle that I should be doing more uh, you know, to provide for my family and not just for myself. The fact that I'm gone for a very significant part of home life is a big, big deal. I've been preparing myself mentally for this, but it's always hard. Got the shelter looking, looking okay, I think. I'm just gonna put up a, a quickie roof here. It's gonna be kind of an A-frame style. It should shed the rain pretty well. You can just tell we've got a huge front coming in. So now is the time to prepare. I think my uh, biggest challenge will be mental. But the animals, mountain lion, wolves, bears, cougar. I've always been, you know, a little deterred about animals. I've never had any problems with them, but uh, that's gonna be on my mind. Look what I just seen uh, washed up right out in front of my camp. What would you do with it? I'm not starving right now. And uh, I have no idea how it died. So, I'm gonna take it by the feet, look at it. I don't see any blood anywhere. Well, <laughs> birds can have parasites and disease. I am not taking a chance of eating it, that's for sure. Ah, look at that. It's a jellyfish. <laughs> so, I am whipping this over there behind those rocks because I don't want something coming along and uh, thinking it's a meal and right out in front of my campsite. Actually, since I had him out of the water, it is actually starting to stink a little bit. <laughs> I like being able to look across there and not see bears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that has me a little bit nervous, I gotta, I gotta admit. I'm building a cabin. I want to put time into like making a really good structure because I know that out here it's gonna get cold. Well, it's nearing the end of the day, and um, I had this premonition to check the clay source uh, in the creek to see how well it fires. Now, the reason I was building the cabin was because 
on the inside I could make a fireplace and with enough clay you could fill in between the stones and also make the wall fireproof. You could add like a thick layer of clay and it would never fire the logs. And I just did some preliminary testing on the clay. I made a few basically like shapes and tossed them in the fire. And it, and it looks like it's inferior. It's just not gonna work. Which basically means my cabin idea isn't gonna work. All these logs behind me, all that work. I'm feeling pretty crushed right now. Man, I worked so hard today. really concerned that coming out here I'd get crazy <laughs> and I reassured her that that was, had already long since happened. I'm just so discouraged right now because I can't find a place to put up shelter. Right now, it's not raining, but I believe it's supposed to rain for like the next five days. And this here was the time that would have gave me the opportunity to get a shelter built these last two days. And I haven't find a, found a place to even build a shelter yet. This is probably the crappiest shelter I've ever put up. It's just because I don't have time. I could not find two trees that there wasn't, you know, a bunch of stuff in the way. It's just... <sighs> you can see here, here's the water. Here's my camp. I'm about two feet up above that water line. I'm kind of hoping it stops. <laughs> So, let's try to figure out something here. The trees are huge. Bushes, bushes, great big giant trees. Everywhere. I don't even know where I would drop a tree in here. I mean, yeah, look right here. I could make a shelter out of that, sure I could. I know how. But, look at the bear path right here. Would you sleep on a bear path? I sir as hell ain't going to. And every damn thing in here is bare pack. Yeah, look at this guys. Bear. If this didn't have bears and cougars and you know, the highest population in North America, it might not bother me as bad. I don't know. I could start constructing something right here. I would hear, you know, there's still bushes and stuff. If anything came around, I would hear. I guess. Yep, this ought to be fun. I'm out of my element. There's no flat ground. It's all six inches of gooey moss. You can raise bed out of that. It will keep me dry, keep me warm, won't keep me safe, but I don't think really much will out here. I'll hear something scratching at the canvas or something if something does come along. I got a lot of brush here. I like that. You'll hear them coming through the brush. And if it's a bear, kind of hoping I just have to say, hey bear, and he'll hear me and hear a human voice and go away. But I'm hoping. I'm running out of daylight. There's the sun. And it's about to go behind that mountain. I have less than a hand. So that means that less than an hour, it's gonna be dark here. 
I don't know, that sun probably ruined that whole thing. Been climbing around this island for a little while now. Never ends. There's a balsam fir in front of me. It has these blisters. See the humps? They have resin in them. And this resin is a good topical medicine. I have all these little cuts and scrapes. I'll dry over it and seal it. And the wound won't be exposed anymore. Spilling your guts on this camera plays hell with you. It's volatile. It brings you down so far. And I, quite honestly, I don't know if I can bring it back up. I don't know. You know, I thought maybe it's because I can't start a fire in this mush and this moisture, but um, I think it might be something more than that. I don't know. Maybe it's just, uh, you know, missing home, missing my family. I don't have any interaction whatsoever except for me and this camera. And it's freaking me out. It's like, uh, I've never been alone like this. All right, well, let's shut this off for a little while. It's been a pretty successful day. Kind of getting into a groove, taking it day by day. I went down this evening and Ate more limpets and more seaweed. I'm gonna try to vary my diet a little bit. I'm gonna work on a cooking camp somewhere else, I guess. And then I'll break out the net and the fishing gear and maybe even trap some. Still missing home. Still thinking about home a lot. Hey, bear. Hey, bear. I'm sitting in here. I was just charged by a bear. Uh, I said, uh, hey, bear. And it just looked at me. I said, hey, bear. And it just keeps on coming at me. He just kept coming, he just kept coming. I just backed away and backed into the woods. I'm scared. I don't know where he is. He could be into the woods circling behind me. I don't know. I'm just hoping he hears my voice and he won't come up here. I don't know, he might come up here, he might. I don't know. All I can do is sit and wait. <sighs> I hear something out there. Hey, bear. 
I'm sitting in here. I was just charged by a bear. I don't know where he is. He could be into the woods circling behind me. I don't know. The big bear too. I just sent a distress call. And I hope it gets to them. All I can do is sit and wait until I hear from them. I'm scared. My heart's still thumping. Ah! Hello. I'm still here. I hear the bear out back there somewhere. He's out there somewhere. I don't know where. I don't know if he's circling me or not. I'm done, dude. I've. Uh, yes, yes, I'm tapping out. Come get me. Are you still there? I hope they come. So we've just hit the logging road out to um, Holberg and we're gonna dive off that down to go and find Wayne. Knowing that Wayne's in immediate danger, we have to go and search for him now. There is no access by boat or plane. No one's willing to fly out at night time. So we took the chance of the road. You guys brought the flares, right? Yeah, we have flares, spray, all that stuff. Yeah, um, Dan's GPS says this is gonna take over three hours. Yeah, sounds about right. <sighs> Heard him out back there, Crunch. I don't know if he's circling around what he's doing. I don't know. Hope they get here quick. Sorry, whoever I disappoint. I'm sorry. This is a chance in a lifetime, it really is. But when you fear for your life, I mean, it's quite a difference. It's not worth dying over. I think this is the easy part. Once we get there, we have a pretty dense forest to get through, find him. To be honest, I don't, I don't even truly know how we're even gonna find him or give him directions to, um, to find us. I have a tarp protecting me. I've got pepper spray and a flare. You know, that, that could do something, but I'd rather have a friggin' rifle. I want out of here. I don't know. I'm just keeping on talking to you because it eases my mind a little bit. I'm just hoping he hears my voice and he won't come up here. I don't know, he might come up here, he might. I don't know. All I can do is sit and wait. This bit comes back, like so. Gotcha. Wayne's location is pretty inaccessible at the moment because it's dark. We can't get to him by air or sea, so we're going to have to go in and hack through the woods as best we can. 
We do have an approximate location of where he is from his GPS tracking device. Whether we can get to him or not is a different matter. It's pretty rough terrain out here. I hope Wayne's OK. We haven't heard from him for ages. We need to get there as quick as we can and make sure he's alive. See, I feel like if we, it's a low tide, if we get we well, This down, is we... going to take us to it. If we can walk on this, we're going to hit another river and it might not be as raging as the other one. We just follow that oh, one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That'd be perfect. So maybe do that and then we can hand rail off that one. Yep. Just straight down. No update from Wayne in 35 minutes. It's been a very slow grinding day, but uh, we persevered. Um, just, I'm just maintaining, just doing it one day at a time. Definitely missing some folks, missing home, but uh, can't dwell on that. You gotta stay focused. I don't know what time it is. Nights here are long, and uh, that means more and more time sitting here in the dark with nothing but time to think about everything, think about life, think about my wife and my family, you know, my dogs. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, $500,000 is a lot of money but how much is the time away from your family worth? We're on a rescue mission to go and find Wayne. When he said he was charged by a big black bear, he said it got within 20 feet of his camp. Um, so he left his fire area and stayed in his tent. We haven't heard from him for ages, so we're a bit concerned. Take the screen down. I mean, that's our best option at the moment. It's clearer. we just got to be careful with our feet. Wait! It's going to be straight out, and then we got to look to the left. We're still about a half mile from wherever he is. Thank you, fire. fire. There he is. Yeah. He's just out to my 12 o'clock now. Wait! Hello? Hello? Why are you staying there? We'll come over. Here they come. I was wondering if you're going to wait until morning. How you doing? Well, before you guys came, it's like, holy <laughs> I hope they come, because it sounded like there's something walking up in the bush up in there. That bear is here. I think he wants his beach back, and he can have it. I'm letting a lot of people down. It sucks. It does, it sucks. But I know my family wants to be back home too. Not happy to go home, no. I feel that I am a survivor, but not when it comes to uh, animals that can chew me up and spit me out. I don't want to be food. And, uh, Saying, hey, bear does not work. Let's go. Let's... Hey, bear. Hey, bear. Whoop, whoop. 
So it's the middle of the night. I just woke up and my fire almost went out. It scared the crap out of me. I looked over and there was nothing but just, just barely embers. <laughs> I got up and I sawed some wood, put some on. It looks like it's gonna be okay. Um, but what's not okay is there's a storm heading, heading somewhere, I'm not sure yet where. But I see the, uh, the flashes of light in the sky and then I hear the rumbles. Mm. That's not good. I hope all the other guys got their shelters up. And I'm shutting this thing off. just coming down and I'm realizing that this canvas is not at all waterproofed in the slightest it's just a sponge waiting to get rained on and uh, it doesn't make for a very good shelter the structure is not going to hold under any real rain so I have some choices to make it just depends on how much it rains but for now it'll do just barely Welcome to the Pacific Northwest. The rain really restricts me to staying in camp. And it seems the more I stay in camp all day, like the more I'm just, you know, inside my own head the whole time. I have a lot of time out here to think why I'm here. What's my goal? Why did I come out here in the first place? And I think, it's strange that I don't have an answer 100% right now. You know, that's, that's really the truth. That's really, you know, the core reason why I'm here. I'll keep you posted on that. <laughs> I'll keep you posted. I'm either tired or I'm starting to relax, one or the other. I just turned 40. You look back at your life and think, where did it go? Just poof, here I am. 40 years old, next to a log in British Columbia. How did it all happen that fast? You, know, you want to be a good father, you want to be a good husband. It's like when you get alone, you know, the, all of it comes up, every mistake you've ever made. You sit and analyze it, analyze yourself, and you just, it's hard to strike that balance, you know, to live a life that's, where you feel like you do justice to everything. My thoughts fluctuate between what's got to be done now and, you know, back, back home. I just, I really miss my family. start to question myself um, if <clears throat> you wonder if the people in your life really know how much you love them
I knew there were going to be animals here, but I didn't think I was going to be stalked. I'm kind of glad I'm going home. I have no way to defend myself. I'm not sleeping here under a piece of canvas with a bunch of wolves behind me. That was enough for me. Hello, bear. You stay on your side. So I got a big problem. I lost my ferro rod. I can't keep this fire going indefinitely. I'm screwed. Oh. oh. Hey, bear. And I think I found a way to filtrate water without fire. Bottoms up. You look back at your life and think, where did it go? Just poof. When you get alone, all of it comes up. Every mistake you've ever made. You wonder if the people in your life really know how much you love them. This is going to be a bitch. We have to film it, and we're totally alone. Nobody knows what it's like here, except for the 10 guys out here doing it. Time to get shelter. There's nobody here but me. so hard doing this alone. I'm scared to death right now. I feel like I'm starving. Pretty sure I just saw a cougar. Oh. The last man standing wins $500,000. I don't want to go home. I want to win. This is a chance in a lifetime, but it's not worth dying over. I'm just kidding. Hope I didn't scare you too bad. All right, this is my little calendar. I've got some notches on that bad boy in case I start to forget. Look what the weather's done to me blade. Constantly wet. It's dripping right now. I actually ought to put on some rain gear. Sky don't look good. I knew that coming here and doing this, my mind would be the my biggest enemy. And let me tell you, brother, it is <laughs> it is ripping me apart. My brain is it's just in a thousand different directions. I really don't want this tide to come in. When it comes in all the way, it's about a few feet from the greenery here. I wish I could stop it. Once the tide comes in, I can't use this beach. I can't have this open air. I have to get back into the dungeon. And it's driving me absolutely freaking insane. It's so claustrophobic inside there. But just working in there and walking around is absolutely depressing. Everything in there is eating itself. It's just turning to mush. Every tree is being bombarded by moss and moisture, and it's just I mean, it's almost completely mush. I mean, you, you can walk up to a stump and just put your hand on it, and your hand will go straight through. It's just so wet in here. I mean, look at that mushrooms growing out of the top of the trees. I mean, physically and mentally, this, this place will drain a human body. And I've spent a lot of my life in places where it was just absolutely horrible. I'm retired military, and currently I'm a trainer in Africa. Hello. You know, I, I've done this enough over the past 15, 20 years through all my training and military training and time in combat and my job in Africa now. One thing I know is, is some of the toughest people just snap. Their emotions can just go take hold of them, and they're done. I'm hoping that my training is going to help me survive for as long as possible. But that flipping jungle, it's mentally eating my brain. Part of that could be dehydration or the beginning stages of dehydration. The tide's out, so I've got this semi-fresh, brackish, hopefully fresh water that's been pumping out um, for a good while. And I don't want to take it too early because then all the salt water doesn't get pulled out. And uh, I end up drinking salt water, and then I really will be hallucinating. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and grab some water. And I think I found a way to filtrate it here in the without fire. It's my wife's two-quart pot. She came to the marriage with this. 
I'm borrowing it. I'll return it, hopefully. <sighs> Sure cleans it up nicely. Bon appetit. Camera gear. <laughs> this is intense. That forest is so dense. It's so extremely hard to navigate through it. You have to constantly be climbing. It's really intense. I'm just having a hard time being here. I'm starving. I want to eat so bad. I kind of have like a clock over my head right now, like a starvation clock. It all depends on if I can get fish over here, yes or no. Eagles. Look at that. Salmon. Maybe that's why the eagles were here, for the fish. I think I just hit the jackpot. Look at the size of this river. Oh, man. If I just found a salmon river that goes to the mountains, that's thick and pure, that has fish in it. It's exactly what I've been looking for. I'm gonna set the net up low so I can try to catch the crab walking by. Because this river is loaded with dead fish and they love to eat on that stuff. They love to eat on stuff that's just on the bottom, flesh and all that. So they're gonna come walking up this river to where they smell the dead fish and then they're gonna run into my net. I'm gonna put rocks along the bottom. My weights are holding down in the middle, but I just feel better with rocks on it as well. Give me an extra weight. In case my stakes rip up and the current tries to take my net, I don't have to worry about it, it's weighted down. So I'm gonna check my net tomorrow. Hopefully we got some crabs. A fish would be nice, too. Right now, it's just dead calm. Tide's going out. It's like Christmas every time this tide starts to go out. I got all kinds of bull kelp washed up here. If it snaps, It wasn't as crisp as I'd like. It should snap like, oh, celery. If it smells fresh, now what you want to do is pull the skin off, like a carrot or a potato, and then you can just eat it. Definitely salty. Be all right if I boiled it. I don't want to eat too much because it's a risk of getting dehydrated. But it doesn't really taste like much at all except seawater. It's got to have that good crunch because you can't eat it if it's decomposing. There's just wood everywhere. The resources here are unbelievable. You know, these logs just break loose from the logging. They just wash up. It's unbelievable. I don't see any reason to have to chop wood up in the bush. I mean, if I can get it up out of this tidal flat, get it somewhere where it'll start to dry out, even still, I can split it up and it'll burn wet once you have an established fire. But the fire is the hard part. If I can get a fire going, I know I'll be okay here in the long term. I know this is a competition between me and myself, and maybe that's why I'm so frustrated by not performing better yet. But... 
Everything but the fire is fine. If I can get a fire going, I know I'll be OK here in the long term. I know this is a competition between me and myself, and maybe that's why I'm so frustrated by not performing better yet, but. Oh. <sighs> I'm busting my friggin' arm right off this mound of, it's like concrete. There's the uh, board I was too busy looking at instead of watching where I was walking. Real nice telephone pole cedar. I'm gonna go over here, dig out this one, get it up where it won't wash away. It's too heavy. <sighs> Definitely having one of those, be careful what you wish for, you might just get it. Casting for the show started over six months ago, and it's all I could think about. I just really wanted to do it. I'd be like super afraid. Because you're afraid of the dark. <laughs> I'm afraid of the dark. I'm not afraid of anything on the island other than myself, really. There's no boogeyman that's just out there murdering people. <laughs> what about like bears and well, bears are just we have bears here. Day to day, it's just gonna be keep them focused on what I'm doing at the moment. You have to be in the moment. It's like when you're running a race, you you can't think about the 26 miles ahead of you. You gotta think about what you're doing at the moment. You know, when it gets cold at night and I'm at home, I can put an extra blanket on the bed or snuggle up with my wife or my dogs. And here, I don't have anything. It's just me and this camera I'm talking to and nobody else to do anything, you know. Anyways enough feeling sorry for myself and thinking about home. Here's my pot of water. Now that I've gotten water and my net has been out, my biggest problem right now is getting fire out here. I am beating up my ferro rod. I can usually get a fire with one strike. I mean, I've probably done hundreds so far. So I have to slow that down. I have to figure out how to get this started and way less strikes. Nice. There's my rolling boil. Gonna gently take this off the fire. I'm gonna let that cool down and I'm gonna have a drink. I just had an amazing idea. This is cedar bark. If I scrape it with my knife, like kindling, you can see it fluffs up really well. I've tried to get flame on my ferro rod with that. It hasn't worked. But my fishing hooks go in this tin. I'm going to pack this cedar bark in here. Then I'm going to put this in my fire and char it. You can do that with cloth called char cloth. This should work the same. If this works, it will take a single spark from the back of my knife or from my ferro rod and give me an ember right away. That would be amazing. That would be a total game changer. All I gotta do is char it up and see what happens. See the smoke coming out of the middle of the hole? That's exactly what I want. Once it stops, immediately, I take it off. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, let's see what we got. Let's see if it cooked enough. Oh, it did. Look at all that char material. All right, let's try a little bit of it. It worked. I have a nice ember. I'm gonna put that inside my tinder bundle. Yes. This looks very promising. I think I finally cracked the code, fire-wise, to this place. It's just been quite the journey. Life will get easier every day. I've been having a lot of cramps, stomach cramps. It's just, just this gut-wrenching, like, t tensioning of my stomach muscles. Anyway, uh... I'm gonna crawl back in this sleeping bag and see if I don't feel a little bit better. Also, I've seen these flashing lights. Every now and again, I'll see a flashing light out there. Is it my, what could, I mean, is it lightning? Is it, I don't have lightning bugs here. What in the heck is it? I guess you see things uh, when it gets, it's as dark as it is here. You see things that just, you wouldn't see anywhere else. It's freaky. But the, um, it started making me think while I was asleep or I was laying here, I wasn't sleeping, but I was thinking about the, about the water. You know, is the water fresh? as it pumps out of this marsh, you know, makes me wonder if I'm ingesting uh, seawater. If I'm drinking salt water, I'm gonna go insane. So, uh, um, I had a pretty horrible night. I, uh, I didn't sleep any until a little bit this morning. Um, I've been having a lot of shakes, extreme shakes, and I, which is, uh, I'm not, uh, I wasn't hungry, I wasn't thirsty, I wasn't, I wasn't cold. So uh, I really don't know what that's all about. Fact is, I'm thirsty, but I'm just bloated. I feel like I just don't even know if I have room in my stomach for water. That's not a good sign. Shakes in the middle of the night without hypothermia is not a good sign. I'm concerned about this quality of this water, this fresh water source. I don't know what else it could be other than this water. And, uh, and I'm looking at it right now and the water coming out of here is brackish. It's actually salt water mixed with fresh water. I can see the, the tint that it produces. And I drank about 10, probably about 10 quarts of it yesterday. It could have higher levels of sodium in it. Plus, it's got extremely high amounts of bacteria because of the, the temperature of this water. It's gotta be in the 50s. It's gotta got be in the perfect range for bacteria growth. So I've been drinking from basically a brackish pond here. I have been waiting till the tide is at its lowest for this creek to drop out so I could get the freshest water possible. And then I filter it through spangle moss. But uh, it doesn't really appear. I mean, just based on the way I feel, I think I possibly have some type of, uh, oh, it stinks. Oh my gosh. 
So, I've been drinking water out of a creek with a dead fish rotting on the side of the bank. This is a nausea I've never felt before. <sighs> Exhausted, out of energy. Oh my gosh. This is one big sandwich. And I'm the only one here to take a bite. Fruit, oh, there it almost came. Today's a great day. And the hike, I found chanterelles. And not just a few, but quite a bit. Some of these are beauties. Look at these guys. I might just have to have mushroom soup for the next two days, which is fine with me. What a find. Couldn't be happy about it. I found this bull kelp laying here, so I'm gonna give it a rinse and have a nibble. I'm gonna roll that up. Like a mini burrito. Mmm, mmm, delicious. Mmm. I'll tell myself that that's the number 21 down at the Mexican restaurant. Mmm. Today is a pretty special day. It's the hardest day for me to be out here by far. Um, it's my little girl's birthday. She turns four years old today. And it, uh, it wounds me to be out here. We're proud of Daddy, huh? Yes, we are. He's so strong. Yes, he is. And he's very, and he's very lovely. He is very lovely. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna cook one now? Thanks, You're welcome. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm not with you on your special day. I miss and love you both. Happy birthday, pumpkin. I'm not sure when I'll be home. Daddy misses you. I went to bed with pretty good spirits last night. And then um, I don't think I slept more than a couple hours. The solitude and the, the quietness of it. My heartbeat was waking me up in the middle of the night. I actually hallucinated. Well, I, I'm, I'd, I'd wake up to flashes of light. Middle of the night, it was dark. I mean, when I say dark, it's dark. But I look up at the top of my tent, and uh, as clear as day, 
I can see these symbols in the roof of my tent. At first, my first thought was they were watermarks. Because, I, I mean, it, the, the, the thing is they were random. They kept changing. I don't know, they're like perfect. Mayan or I Indian symbols or native symbols. I don't know. <sighs> now, was that dehydration? Or was that? Mm. The beginning stage of insanity. You know, I, I just I felt unsafe. Physically, mentally unsafe. It's, it's just, it just, it's, it's driving me insane. I mean, literally. I don't think I can close my eyes again in this place. I think I'm too far gone. I called for a uh, medic. This journey may be coming to an end abruptly. There's no way that even something as beautiful as this is worth dying for. I never feared my, for my safety <laughs> the way I fear for it in that jungle. It is the craziest thing I have ever seen. It really is. Whew, I'm getting nauseous. <sighs> this place has completely beat me down. Here's the boat. My guts are turning inside out, and I'm just, my nerves are shot. Where about see where you're getting your water from? This creek right here. Once it dumps, when it dumps out, when the tide goes completely out. This is not safe. How much of the water did you drink here? At, at least 10 quarts. It's hard, dude, it's hard. I've been in some hard places. I've been in combat. I work in some of the worst places in the world. I will not spend another night in there. I was petrified. I, I couldn't stay out here tonight. I can't, I can't stay out here tonight. I don't think I can go any further. You sure? Yeah. You're done? Yeah, I'm tapping out, I'm done. I'm not a bushcrafter, I'm not a frontiersman. You know, I, I believe in military survival. You uh, do what you gotta do to stay alive and then you get off the X. Girls, I'm coming home. The isolation is a killer to me. But until you've really been by yourself, completely alone in something this harsh, it's, it's just, it just, it completely broke my spirit. It broke my will. So goodbye to my uh, my cove, McGee's Point, and hello to my rescue. I think of myself pretty strong mentally. It chewed me, it's chewed me away just, you know. There is no dry kindling in the forest. You find fuel and you process it down. That's the only way to get dry stuff out here. Processing wood is almost therapeutic in a way. It's really easy in this type of environment when the rain is pouring down and you're hunkered down in a shelter to just become your own worst enemy. And that's the last thing that I want to do. Fire also gives you a big sense of security. There are a lot of predators in this area. Um, there's, you know, bears. I've heard the wolves several times. And the highest density of cougars in North America. There was actually a cougar attack in this area about three weeks ago. Guy was sea kayaking, you know, got out to go to the bathroom or something, and cougar attacked him. I think he had to be airlifted out of there, actually. It was a big deal. Yeah, it's just a matter of always, always being aware. 
of your surroundings. And I think cougars are afraid of fire. Just heard a twig snap. <laughs> Hopefully it's not a skunk. I'm not afraid of bears or cougars or any of that stuff getting me in the night, but I spent some time in Northern Arizona and uh, I woke up face, nose to nose with a skunk, terrified of skunks. And it's late. I am hungry and my body is reminding me it's late. eat so bad I'm starving okay so my net has been out for a couple cycles of high tide and low tide let's go see if we got anything here's my net looks like there's a bunch of seaweed or something are you serious right now I see a huge fish in my net. Look at this fish. Holy shit. It's monstrous. I hear a strange noise. That was a weird sound. I didn't like that sound at all. Yeah, that sound was bizarre. It was like something was pulling its paws out of the mud or something. Hope that wasn't a predator. I'll just take everything and run. I don't even care about pulling it nicely. I'm just getting out of here. That was not cool. My net's gonna take a beating, dragging over all these sharp rocks and everything, but I don't even care. I just wanna get back to my camp, be safe. Out here in the middle of the night is really dangerous. There's bear in the area, there's cougar in the area, there's wolves in the area. It's not a joke. That was a weird sound. I didn't like that sound at all. I'll just take everything and run. I don't even care about pulling it nicely. I'm just getting out of here. Yeah, that sound was bizarre. It was like something was pulling its paws out of the mud or something. Hope that wasn't a predator. That was not cool. I just want to get back to my camp, be safe. Out here in the middle of the night is really dangerous. There's bear in the area, there's cougar in the area, there's wolves in the area. It's not a joke. I can't believe the size of that fish. That thing's huge. Whew. I'm almost there. All right, back to camp. Whew. Time to get a fire going ASAP. Got a number. Put that inside my tinder bundle. Huge fish. What a blessing. Right, so I'm gonna start working on him and get him ready to be cooked. I need to make a proper butchering table. Split stick. Trying to make quick cordage like this. 
Okay, so I'm gonna just try to put a knot in this without breaking it, if I can. Just like that. I'm gonna go through here. I'm gonna do that again in the bottom now. Okay, well, it's not the prettiest job I've done on this, but uh, it was quick, it was at night. Basically, the stick holds the fish up like a sail, holds it all spread out. So now I'm gonna just let that roast. I think this has been the longest day since I've been here. And I think they'll probably get longer once you get more things figured out and just kind of, it's like anything in life. You set routines, even animals have patterns, routines. And then it seems more, more monotonous. You know, the newness first couple days was enough to keep you where it was just moving along. And, but I can feel it starting to slow down today. If you spend a lot of time alone in the wilderness, you better like yourself. Better be good company. I know this is about survival and everything else, but to me, it's about living here. It's about becoming part of the landscape. Nature here is a powerful force, and I, I don't want to disrupt that. I don't, I don't want to fight nature. You know, I just hope that I'm able to find myself and find it, find an inner peace here. Definitely the largest fish I've ever done with this method. Infrared's not gonna do it any justice, but that is golden brown delicious. Heavenly Father, thank you for this amazing meal I'm about to eat. Thank you for this beautiful fish on my behalf. I thank you for all that I have, um, all that I will have, all that I've had in the past. I thank you for all that is. I thank you for this amazing planet that we live on and all the life therein. Thank you for my family, my wife and daughter, who I love and miss very much. I can't wait to eat. <laughs> I mean, it's it's like I've actually cooked meat. Oh my God, that's, that's gotta be five pounds of meat right there. Epic. Let's taste it. Mm. Still juicy. So it just dripped in my pants so I wiped it off right away. I'm a smart fish. Mm. This fish is just knocking it out of the park, though. This is crazy. Um, things have changed quite a bit. I know I can find fresh water now. I have tons of food out of nowhere. So I am very thankful for the turn of events because I wasn't doing well. Things have changed. Pretty sure I just saw a cougar about 10 feet from my front door.
Definitely the biggest fish I've ever caught. It's time to dig in. Mm. Pretty sure I just saw a cougar about 10 feet from my front door. Two bright flashing eyes. When my headlamp hit its face, it moved really fast out of the way, silently. All my gear is outside the shelter right now. I think I hear it out there. I mean, that that's crazy. That's like a 150-pound cat. You know, it's like your house cat at home can hide anywhere, super stealth, and jump on top of the fridge, stand still, and like crazy ninja, right? Well, now I have a 150 to 200-pound ninja running around in the woods that's feral, that likes to eat meat and attacks people for sure. That's kind of like the most insane predator I've ever heard of. I have a flare in my hand and I have my knife. Everything's buttoned up and I'm gonna try to get some sleep. We'll see what happens. If I die tonight, I just want my wife, Crystal, my daughter Sophie to know I think of them every day. My father's, I'm glad he's my father.